Mm. And I looked at Rowett's post-match interview, you know, where they do the pitch side yeah. interview yeah. for the Blues TV. And he even questioned the subs that he made. In, I saw that. In re- he, yeah. he looked back and said, I, don't, I, I can't remember, I'm paraphrasing here, I could get this wrong, but he said, you know, sometimes you have to look at these things and question yourself or, or question the decision behind it. And I think he looks back and he, I yeah. think he acknowledges he made a mistake with those subs, bringing Dembele and Hogan on. So welcome back to Small Heath Alliance FC. And on Saturday, Birmingham City travelled to the King Power Stadium to play Leicester with both teams having a lot at stake for very different reasons and opposite ends of the table. With Leicester wanting to to keep the pressure on Ipswich and Leeds and Birmingham City hopefully trying to keep that momentum going from that 1-0 win at home uh, against Preston last week. But it wasn't meant to be. And football is a cruel game with Leicester taking all three points in the 87th minute to eventually jump back into the top spot and Birmingham City unfortunately uh, jumping into the relegation zone but we're going to discuss everything that happened on Saturday in this video and we're going to get straight into it and I'm going to hand it straight over to you dad and what were your initial thoughts on that game on Saturday once again it's disappointment it's um, you know you look at the Leicester team and you know that you're going to get a tough game when you go to Leicester they're, they're, a, they're a premiership club you, you you mentioned in the pre-match video about the difference in the cost of their squad compared to ours it's just completely chalk and cheese so you know when you go there that you're expecting a tough game but I think overall performance wise there's no doubt that the effort was there from the Blues players Um, and again it comes down to that lack of concentration that you also mentioned in the intro conceding so late and so many videos that we've done after matches where we've conceded in the 85th minute plus it really is frustrating because that would have been an absolutely brilliant point if we could have held on unfortunately we couldn't Um, but I don't know what you think Matt I, I think when we looked at the remaining games we had to go when we had about 10 games to go everyone sort of raised their eyebrow oh we've got Leicester coming up you know and you sort of didn't really expect that we would get an awful lot out of that game but I think what we can take from that game we'll analyse it a little bit more deeper in a minute but I think we can take from a really good performance uh, and hopefully give us a bit of confidence now for the remaining matches Yeah I, I think most Blues fans were hoping to possibly go to the King Power with a point coming away from it with a point at best yeah. and actually I think we deserved a point uh, yeah. when all said and done but as I said in the intro, football's a cruel game and you know it wasn't to be in the 87th minute. How many times, Dad, are we going to sit here opposite each other and go 80, 85? And the the concerning trend, I guess, is we keep conceding goals in 80, 85, 90 and teams around us, Huddersfield, Millwall, they're scoring goals in 85, 90 yeah. plus to win games. Yeah. So not only, I think this feels like a double bad one because we lost to Leicester and Huddersfield picked up points um, who there was Plymouth, a, Plymouth, uh, Plymouth pick, as well, and Sheffield sorry, so, Wednesday as well. Uh, yeah, and Sheffield Wednesday. So yeah. they all picked up po- uh, yeah. valuable points as well. So it made it feel, I think, a lot more dramatic yeah. and drastic than it actually was, really, because no one was going to expect us to bring back three points from the King Power. But um, you know, with the away team at Leicester, high quality, you don't want to concede those goals early, do you? So yeah. um, the way we set up in the in the first ten minutes was exactly how I expected. Um, and again, another poor for me, avoidable goal. Why do we allow so many goals into the box? It really drives me nuts. And that goal kind of reminded me of our goal against Sunderland and Blackburn. A bit of ping pong. The first goal. Yeah, sorry, the first goal Leicester scored. That ping pong, that back and forth in the box. We just couldn't get it clear. Again, it should, it should have been cleared. I, it should have been I, I cleared. agree. And I, when you look at the actual sequence of events for that goal, it is ping ponged around. But we had a couple of opportunities to clear it. I think actually it was Bielek that passed it back. So I think it might have been Indeedy who laid it onto Dewsbury Hall, who slotted it in. Yeah. But it could have been. Like we said in the preview again, if in doubt, kick, kick it, it out. out yeah. Particularly a team like Leicester. Um, I thought as well the second goal was avoidable as well. You know, the, their goal was you know the, the amount of uh, space that um, Mavadidi had. On the far post, was that far post was absolutely ridiculous, and I think that was possibly because it was happened not long after the substitutions, so the team shape had changed a little bit. Yeah, um, but they should never. I mean, how many goals have you ever seen Mavadidi score with his head? I, yeah. can't, I can't remember one, if I'm honest, apart from that. So, and he's not a massive, also, he's not a tall player, is he either? No, but he, had, he, he could have literally, I mean, he could, he could have literally just, just rolled his hands up and just stub and, uh, yeah. bang, put it, put it in the net because he had so much time. There was three things for me on that goal. One was uh, Dembele and Hogan strolling, no press. Uh, Vestergaard managed to run the ball 20 yards, 15, 20 yards before anyone yeah. was even around him, before it went out wide. Then the second error happens, we allow the cross to come into the box. How many times, Dad, this season have we said, cut the balls getting into the box? We allowed yeah. the cross to get into the box. Ruddy doesn't come for it as well. Should Ruddy be claiming that cross a little bit more? I, I think, think so. I think he could I have been commanding so. that. Yeah. And then Iwu and Laird are marking it. They're in no man's land for that at the back. So, again, 
don't get me wrong, Leicester's quality showed in the end, but lack of concentration, yeah. not switched on for the full 90. And for me, again, actually, you know, let's call it what it was. For me, I think those subs had a massive impact in that game. I think they completely killed our momentum. I think the press stopped because yeah. we weren't attacking Leicester. We weren't in the second half. We weren't bringing the game to Leicester, but we were pressing enough for them to not cause us a huge amount of problems. And I actually thought Leicester were quite sloppy, especially down their right-hand side. Yeah, they were overplaying yeah. it. Um, too many passes, too stray passes. I actually thought... Um, for the majority of the game, actually, Laird and Buchanan kept their wingers quite quiet-ish. Yeah. Um, you know, when you think about the quality of Mavadidi and uh, is it Fatty, um, uh, Fatou, yeah. uh, uh, the, the other winger, you know, quality, quality players. Um, but yeah, just that, again, lack of concentration, isn't it? And from a Blues perspective, it is just so frustrating. It is. I think, again, overall, if you look at the performance, for us, it was a good performance. To go there and to, you know, to limit them to, um, you know, okay, they had a few chances because Ruddy came up with a few good saves, he actually. Did. No, he did. Uh, he, he did. He did well um, on a number of occasions to kick the ball out. Um, but we press them and close yeah. them down and I think that's what we needed to do to a team like Leicester as well uh, you can tell by the stats which is no surprise we have 32% possession which but that Leicester do that to most teams anyway so yeah. you, you know that Leicester are going to have um, uh, an awful lot of the ball um, but those goals that we conceded were, were avoidable um, but also as well, I've, I've really, you know, when you look at the goal that Stansfield scored, you know, he did just literally <laughs> pressing. Yeah, pressing. Uh, and, that, and that shows you that you can do that to teams as well, that uh, you can just put pressure on. But teams do that all the time to us. Mm. They press us. And we've had been forced into mistakes in previous games where we've conceded goals. So it's nice to see us get one. Yeah, uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Well done to Stansfield for, for the and pressing. And it, again, was that, it was that classic uh, curving run. Because the, 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 mod the modern strikers now, they don't run directly at the keeper. They curve their run so they can only play it in one one direction yeah. really clever yeah. and Stansfield does it all the time he curves his run he curved his run kept on going and he got his he got his yeah. just re just rewards for the hard work Stansfield puts in up at the front line doesn't he because me and you dad we always say fair enough he could possibly score a few more goals we'd like to see a little bit more finesse on his finishes yeah. but you can never knock his work rate and the energy no, no, that he puts in no. up the top he really runs that front line doesn't yeah. he every game so I was really happy to see him get a goal which was justifiably rewarding that hard work and that press that he does uh, you alluded to this and I agree with you, possibly taking him off resulted in them scoring their second goal because he was pressing and breaking the play down at the forward line. Which, yeah. once he'd gone, as you said, Vestergaard just had a he just ran yeah. straight through. Yeah. Uh, and Hogan then, uh, and then Belly just looked like they were having a stroll they, on the park. They just came, they just came on, didn't they? Yeah. It was interesting as well to notice that, and I think uh, we're dying to see Gary Rowett's now preferred team because it's exactly the same starting yeah. lineup as the team that started against Preston, yeah. which I think it should have been, but it, it was. Um, but it, he also played, like you said, a 4 2 3 1, which, mm -hmm. which was a really interesting um, formation because I thought he might adapt the formation for Leicester but I think it shows that he feels that we have got the players mm -hmm. to to uh, to trouble teams um, it's just that um, you know coming away again with no points and then the compound issue of the three teams around us winning as well made the whole thing absolutely worse but as I mentioned at the beginning this is Leicester City and they are going to be promoted they will be promoted um, they'll be in the Premier League next season and we Give a good account of ourselves, but that doesn't matter, does it? Mm. Because now it's all about points. But we have to now look at our final five games. That's where we now need to start. Five to pick cup up finals. So starting with um, oh. Cardiff City uh, on Wednesday, and we need to put the effort in. But we're now we we're at a point now where we can't allow these games to keep drifting without getting yeah. points. We have to pick points up now. We're uh, in absolutely that position. Absolutely. And I just want to pick up on a point that you mentioned because it's relevant to the conversation. And I looked at Rowett's post-match interview, you know, where they do the pitch side yeah. interview yeah. for the Blues TV. And he even questioned the subs that he made. In, I saw that. In re he, yeah. he looked back and said, I don't, I, I can't remember, I'm paraphrasing here, I could get this wrong, but he said, you know, sometimes you have to look at these things and question yourself or, or question the decision behind it. And I think he looks back and he, I yeah. think he acknowledges he made a mistake with those subs, bringing Dembele and Hogan on. But, you know, uh, as you say, we are where we are. We come away with nothing. The score sheet reads Leicester 2, Birmingham City 1. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder if his managers, you know, just generally, their mentality, is not just Rower, but every manager feels like they have to make substitutions because yeah. rather than sort of read the game and think, actually, I'd be better off keeping the team as they are at the moment because they are, they're solid enough. I think you, you see the amount of substitutions that are made from 85 minute up until 90 plus. And sometimes it's just, just leave it alone. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong. Just keep the yeah. team that's out there. They're doing fine. Don't make the yeah. substitutions. If it's not broken, don't yeah, fix it. Yeah, because I agree. I think the substitutions, once again, you know, and Gary Rowe admitted this, didn't he, really? He felt that yeah. maybe in hindsight he shouldn't 
didn't make good decisions there. Um, uh, and that's fine with hindsight, and that's great that he's, he's um, sort of uh, mentioned that. But um, this is what changes games. It's decisions like this that change games. And if we'd have come away with one point, uh, brilliant. But we didn't. Again, mm -hmm. unfortunately, it's a big fat zero, and that doesn't help yeah. us at all, does it really? No, exactly. But you know what, Dad? I don't want this to be a doom and gloom video. You know, I, I was actually really encouraged with what I saw. Yeah. You know, me and you have said uh, we come away from the Middlesbrough game and we came away from the Watford game and we were gutted because we lost, but there was no battle and there was no fight. Fair enough, we've lost on Saturday to a superior team. You know, they've got yeah. more quality than we have, but the fight was there and the battle was there, and we can live with that. And I think the next five games are going to be so t so telling. As we said, five cup finals uh, in a row now. And I actually think with the if they can battle and they can yeah. scrap, we can scrap yeah. one nils and we can scrap through these games. I really do. I think Cardiff now at home. Uh, has turned into a must win yeah. Um, which is going to be an interesting game on Wednesday Cov's going to be an extremely tough game but then Huddersfield and Rotherham away we, that, that, they could be deciding games couldn't they they are absolutely huge it's still in our hands Matt it, it is in our hands uh, and, and obviously we've seen the response and the reaction on social media and I think I think you know a lot of Blues fans are panicked at the moment because we're in the bottom three we've only got five games left but you know what Matt uh, and, and I understand that we're Blues fans ourselves we feel it we don't like look at the league table and seeing ourselves in the bottom three but there's still five games to go it's not over yet and uh, we've played a really good team in Leicester City uh, and now we've got games we've got five games left it's still in our own hands we can still you know get enough points to uh, to stay up and I do get the Blues fans who are getting frustrated and obviously giving their various reasons why this has happened but you know let's leave the inquest till the end of the season Let, let's support the lads for these five games see where, we're, where we are after these five games uh, and let's just you know really get behind the team now for the and I, know it's, I know that's easy to say isn't it because obviously uh, a lot of people are upset after the fact that we've gone into the bottom three and we've run out of games but yeah. um, I still there's still plenty of points to play for here and I think we've got enough in our squad to be able to get out of this I really do I do as well and yeah. and you know what's really interesting just to come back to the Leicester game for a moment is when they scored it actually woke us up we actually started coming at Leicester a little bit more and we got into the game Miyashi had a couple of shots and you know Stansfield pressed for that goal we started to come into the game after they scored that first goal and as I said we started to look a little bit more I mean it wasn't it's never going to be end-to-end -end game away at Leicester, but we started to creep into the game a little bit, which I was really quite impressed to see. I mean, the second half was a completely different story. I mean, they came out, they came out like an express train and didn't stop, really. Yeah, yeah. Um, we, we were basically sitting back in our own half, hoping to get a point, I think, uh, during the majority of the second half. But still, encouraging signs there that we can scrap and get through in terms of for these next five games, we just need to concentrate for the whole duration of the game. Um, and, you yeah. know... I think it's going to be a really intense end to the season. I'm I'm like you. I think we will do this. But as you say, um, sometimes the blame and the negativity on social media is never going to help for these five games let's get through it let's see where we are and then yeah, we can and, 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 then, and then we can do a post-mortem once the season's absolutely. finished absolutely you know and you know we, we feel the frustration ourselves I'm frustrated don't we? Yeah, I'm frustrated as yeah. well you know I saw the you know the, the fact that we got no points again you think to yourself oh my word we've got five games left now and obviously the other teams are picking up but it's still in our own hands and as I say you know we got the Leicester fixture out the way now it's gone it ain't coming back. It's gone. Yeah, yeah. Okay, fair enough. We didn't get any points, but we. I think we put up a good account of ourselves, one that we can give us confidence to know. If we can play like that against Leicester, gives us confidence going to these uh, games now. But as yeah. you say, Cardiff game is absolute must win. Just one final, final yeah, question yeah. for you. Um, Gary Rowett in his post-match uh, interview suggested that um, they may have had a red card when Stansfield went through. I think the ref bottled it. Um, but I, I, I have seen them given for reds. Um, I guess I guess Leicester Cup would have possibly said that that would have been a harsh decision. But I was look, uh, 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 yeah, I was screaming, going red, red guard. If I'm totally honest, because at the end of the day, the law says that's the last man, and he and, and he and he stops yeah. a goal scoring opportunity. It's yeah. red card. Yeah, I, mean, I, mean, I looked at it a couple of times. Um, I don't think referees are going to give that. No. Because I think there's too many defenders around him to, to suggest you, he was the last man. You, you've seen them given, though. Oh, well, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, we, we could have another video about the inconsistency yeah, yeah. of refereeing. But for me, I looked at that a few times. I thought, no, nah, referee ain't going to give that. But so, in theory, though, if you look at the line, if you're going to put the VAR lines across with the yellows and the reds, he yeah, was he was yeah. the last man. Yes, who, it, who, who knocked he, he was. But there were two defenders fairly close to him. So the referee's argument is, or counter argument is going to be, well, okay, if he'd have gone through, there was two defenders that are coming at him. Yeah. Whether they catch him or not, he's this, fast, isn't he? But this is why we have different referees because they all interpret different situations. They, differently, they, they do. They? But for me, I mean, I'd love it to have been a red card, but <laughs> but uh, I, I looked at it, I thought a referee ain't going to give that. So. Yeah. Um, 
you know, it's just one of them things, unfortunately. It's another decision that we didn't get. So Birmingham City supporters, we'd love to hear from you. Please drop us a comment on what your thoughts were from the game. Were you happy with the determination uh, and the grit from the players? But as you know, as we said, football's a cruel game and we were punished again in the 87th minute causing uh, more frustration. But if you do like this content and you like this video, please don't forget to give us a thumbs up. As I say, please leave us a comment in the section below. Me and Dad love uh, hearing and getting your immediate feedback and replying to as many of those comments as we can. And Leicester fans, are you buzzing now to be back at the top of the table? And what did you think of your team's performance at the weekend? We'd love to hear uh, from you as well. But as I say, please, if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And the handles for our new X page and Instagram page are on screen now. So please don't... Uh, so please feel free to check us out on those and give us a follow over there as well. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss any future content all about Birmingham City. And me and Dad will see you on the next video.